Our friend Brian Baldinger of NFL Network, he is also an Odyssey NFL insider, host of the Odyssey original podcast, The Best Football Show, featuring daily breakdowns of all the most exciting moments across the league. And, of course, at Baldy NFL on Twitter for the Baldy Breakdowns. Brian Baldinger, good morning. Gresham Fourier, how are you? Good morning, guys. I'm doing great, man. It's good to be with you. Uh, and uh, good to actually have at least a little bit of offense to break down. Uh, fortunate, yeah. fortunate with some field position. Uh, how I mean, a a really good opening drive. Uh, I'm just curious from your end, what did you see in the first half from the New England Patriots offensively last Thursday night? We saw a passing game. You know, a passing game that. that looked modern and up to date and got a tight end involved in Hunter Henry finished off drives. So, uh, you know, I, I think that was probably the best thing we saw was just, you know, I mean, we just saw really probably the best all around game that Zeke has played in a couple of years, to be honest with you. I mean, I think he had 29 touches in the game, had the touchdown, uh, you know, off the man coverage and the flat route. I, I, I thought it was, you know, especially with the loss of Ramondre, you know, to see uh, to see Zeke still have that in him, I thought that was impressive. What do you think about the now? The second half was totally different. It seemed like the Steelers, you know, just woke up defensively and decided they just weren't going to have any anymore. And you know, twenty one point lead it was a twenty one three lead soon evaporated. Yeah, it did. Um, but you would expect that from Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. I'm sure Mike Tomlin wasn't real happy at halftime. I'm sure T.J. Watt and the whole group said, you know, this is not who we are, um, and let's do something about it. So, I mean, that stuff can, can happen. They got back in the game, but at the end, they made the plays at the end. I'm not sure what Mitch Trubisky was looking at in some of those final plays on third and two and fourth and two because he had open receivers, and he threw it to the wrong guy. But, I mean, you know, that's their problem. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Baldy, I was just thinking about that game, and, you know, I thought that I was watching that game thinking, and I know it's been, it's been a week ago today, uh, how bad the quarterback situation was uh, for the Patriots. And I was thinking, wow, like the Steelers have it worse. And then you look at all these other teams with all these backup quarterbacks. I'm like, I, 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 I guess it's always been like this. Or is this year like different than the rest with all the starters, prominent starters going down? This feels different, you know, and I'm not here tracking, you know, how many starting quarterbacks are out, you know, I mean, obviously, you lose Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert. You lose these guys, you lose a lot. And so then it's a question of, you know, who's got the best backups or the backup to the backups, you know? And, and so uh, <clears throat> it seems like it's more this year because, you know, we're taking quarterbacks like Joe Flacco off the street and, you know, we're, we're playing Jake Browning and nobody saw Jake Browning really play before, but, you know, he's playing, you know, miraculously good. And so if you have a good backup quarterback right now, you know, you have a, it looks like you have a chance to win some of these games, especially down the stretch when so many of these games this weekend have strong playoff implications. Brian Baldinger of uh, Odyssey NFL Insider and NFL Network here with Gresham Fourier. Baldy, I know that uh, defensively there are more and more numbers that are coming out that really praise this Patriots defense. I saw one today about explosive plays allowed on defense through 14 weeks. And the Patriots rate, I do believe, third best in the league in terms of not allowing those big plays, the explosive plays. And they're doing it without a couple of important defensive players in Gonzalez and Judon and even Marcus Jones going down. Down. Is this defensive group that you see on film, Baldy, worth investing in for another year? Do they have it right on at least that side of the ball, in your opinion? Well, it, you know, it's, so, it's always going to start um, with stopping the run. They're number one in the NFL against the run. Teams are averaging 3.2 yards a carry. And that's just, um, honestly, uh, fundamentals. That's just literally stacking and shedding offensive lineman up front with whether, you know, pick a guy, whether it's Wise or Barmore, you know, any of the guys up front, um, you know, their, their ability just to stop the run and really turn you into a one-dimensional team is as good as it gets in this business. And then really to play without Gonzalez and Judon and still limit the explosive plays and just, you know, pick a game. You know, what they've done to Miami, I think they had one explosive play um, up there in Foxborough. Um, you know, maybe Jalen Waddle had one over 20 yards. So you keep everything in front of them. 
uh, I think is 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 really a credit really to to Bill and his staff and what they are able to do, how they're able to, whether it was you know pitch a shutout, you know against uh, basically almost pitch a shutout against the Chargers, and uh, you know what they did last week to Pittsburgh. I think they had a couple of you know big plays. The the, the touchdown jumps out at me to. Uh, Deontay Johnson last week they gave up, but there wasn't many more than that that they gave up. So really they're keeping it in front of them. They're stopping to run, and then they still run the same damn twist stunts that they've been running since their first Super Bowl win with Willie McGinnis and Mike Vrabel. So, um, you know, it, that stuff still works, and it's still effective. That sounded, by the way, Baldy, like – crusty offensive line coach they're still running the same yeah. damn stuff yeah. from 20 years ago we can't block this damn stuff we can't pick it up we can't pick it up yeah. that was a good pickup because that's exactly how i wanted to sound because I sit there and i watch some of these these twist stunts i'm like dude they've been running this stuff over and over it's the same thing it's the same tango block right here like they still can't get it with this delayed blitz behind it like it still works and quarterbacks still get frustrated by it. And offensive linemen still can't still pick can't it up. Still can't block it. It's yep. amazing. So uh, I, I want to yeah. take a walk down the rumor mill with you if, you, if you don't mind. We can go hand in hand yeah. with this because I do think you're obviously you're one of the best in the business with analyzing tape and breaking down things. We're really grateful that you spent the year with us. Um, but I think the one thing that is going to get the most attention, Balding, is the bill. Uh, Belichick situation. And I know you know who Tom Kern is and and his report about how a decision was already been made in regards to Bill Belichick being the head coach next year. I'm curious where you sit on that and your thoughts on it. Well, I mean, Tom says, he, you know, he's not making it up. You know, Tom wouldn't do that. And so, you know, I don't know where it comes from. Would Jonathan Kraft tell Tom Kern that, you know, we're going to move on from our coach? Like, I, I find that hard to believe, but I don't know, you know, um, you know, who's talking to Tom and I'm not pretending like I'm going to go find that out either. I'm not, but you know, what, regardless what happens, like, let's just say they do move on. Like, I think it builds, gets a job in five minutes. Like I, you know, look, Parcells isn't that a sign that he one... should stay? Isn't but, that, well, it... I, look, it, it, look, it, like they're not, nobody's like Jimmy Johnson couldn't win any games in Miami without a quarterback. You know, I've seen Sean Payton struggle in new Orleans. When even with Drew Brees, if they didn't have a really good roster around him, and they fixed it with a good draft, um, you know wh- whether it's these quarterbacks or not. Like I, if you said Bill stays and let's let's get some let let's get a better roster, like that's one thing that I I I think can work. And then like to say let's just say they do move on. Let's just say the re- there's truth to the report, there's legs to it, whatever, and they move on. And Bill goes, I think it could be a good it could be a good thing for Bill to move on and go someplace else. Tom, you know, obviously Brady went on, won a Super Bowl. It was good for him. It was good to get out. Maybe it's good for Bill to get away from New England. And let's just say, like, put him with Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Like, I think it could be very rejuvenating for him to go someplace else, you know, um, a different roster, like, and start, for, you know, and, and put his style and his stamp on a new team just to almost even cement his legacy even more to go have some success someplace else. Yeah, it gets into Baldy, all of that stuff of, oh, don't let him pick players or don't let him do this or, oh, he's going to be 72 years old. I don't I don't think his age matters at all. Do you? I don't either. Yeah. No, I don't think it, it matters for Pete Carroll. I don't think it matters for Bill Belichick. I don't think it mattered for, I don't know, um, Marv Levy when he was in his 70s. You know, I mean, I just think guys that can coach can coach. And I don't, I don't believe – the idea that this age difference or generations difference, guys want to be told, guys want to believe that when that guy stands up in front of the room and says, this is what we need to do to win the game, that they believe that guy, that this is what we need to do to win the game. And that's what they want. They want success. And they want to, And I don't think age has anything to do with it. I'm with you. I always thought that regardless of how long you've been in the league or how accomplished you were, you appreciate coaching. Like and, and especially yeah. high level coaching, like you know, that's a that's a turn on 
to most guys. Like, whoa, this guy, he knows a two-eye better than anybody. Well, the first time you get around somebody like Dante Scarnecchia, who is older than Bill, you're still mesmerized yeah. when you sit and talk to that guy, and he commands your attention. So, Baldy, what, th- what are your thoughts about uh, the, the chances the Patriots can go back-to-back wins, obviously against a team, uh, against the Chiefs that are, you know, coming off a couple losses? Well, the Chiefs' defense is a lot better than Pittsburgh's. Uh, I think they're as good as any defense in football. Um, so they 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 they, they challenge you. Steve Spagnuolo. In fact, I'm at NFL Films right now. I still have his cover three defense on my whiteboard over here that he, he taught me one day. Um, they they blitz their corners more than any other team in this league. They can play any variety of defense, any style of defense <clears throat> that you want. You want to play zone. You want to play man. You want to blitz. I mean, whatever you want. They have, and then they have playmakers from Legarius Sneed to Nick Bolton to Chris Jones, you name it, everywhere. Like this is a this is a very difficult defense to penetrate. Like you got to be exceptional to that. But I would say that they're what I want to watch in this game and see more than anything is okay. We know what Travis Kelsey is. We know that he is the safety blanket in every situation for Mahomes, and Belichick knows that. And it's just a classic matchup. Like how are they going to limit? Uh, Travis Kelsey in his game because if they can, or almost eliminate him, like they really really struggle, and so I, I kind of want to see the coaching expertise here and what they do against Travis Kelsey. Uh, Brian Baldinger of NFL Network, Odyssey NFL Insider with Gresham Fourier, Chris Jones held out. He uh, showed up a little late. Obviously, has worked his way back into being Chris Jones here, Baldy. How is Spagnolo using him? Is he really an in-between the tackles guy? Are they lining him up outside? What are they doing with Chris Jones? Because, boy, oh, boy, Bill Belichick put the love tongue all over him yesterday. Well, he's the piano man. I mean, he, he lines up and plays up and down the line of scrimmage. And sometimes, you like, I remember week two against Jacksonville, they had a rookie right tackle on Anton Harrison. Might become a good player. I mean, Chris Jones wore him out. Uh, they're, they're putting him... Whatever they think the pigeon is, like they're going to put them on top of the pigeon. Uh, for <laughs> to find one, the pigeon. Oh, wait a second! What a great wait! Line. I have never heard <laughs> that pigeon. before. <laughs> that I is. I don't know where that came from. What? It just popped into my head. I mean, That's did great. you just make that up now. just now? He might have. The pigeon. <laughs> I think I just made it up. That I is love um, it. totally using. I will credit right. you too, by the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but I mean, he, he, he'll find the weak link and he'll wear it out. Um, if you don't double Chris Jones, I don't care who he's going against. He's going to win. And it's, he wins. In a, he can win with sh- uh, straight power. He can win with moves. He grabs your wrist and it's just a pain in the ass. Like whatever Bill said, I didn't hear his press conference about him. But whatever Bill said, he wasn't like blowing smoke up him. Like it's, it's real. The guy is a phenomenal um, player. And it's not just interior. He, he can ruin anybody and make anybody look bad right now. Baldy, thanks for the time. Great stuff. Great conversation. We appreciate it. And uh, Pigeon, we got a new one, baby. I Gotta love find it. that pigeon. Old school. Find that pigeon. Uh, Bald- Somebody said that to you at some point in time. You had forgotten about it for 30 years. So, so, yeah, he so, just logged it. That's yeah, right. just logged it out of some. You know what it is? Of my mind. You went yeah. into O line coach mind, yeah. is what it was. Yeah. So it was like, yep, we're going to find the pigeon and go after That's it. That's amazing. Uh, thanks, Baldy. We'll talk to you <laughs> soon. Oh, uh, great right, stuff. Talk to, talk to you next week. There we uh, go. Brian Baldinger's the best. I'm that trying was great. To, I'm trying pigeon. to think of like, so the pigeon is a new one, which is, and it's funny because I'm trying to think of the other one was Weak Sister. A $10 Shake, who is admittedly one of our older listeners in okay. the Twitch chat. I think he has admitted it before. If not, I don't besmirch $10 Shake, said pigeon that's old school basically means easy mark. Nice. I love it. It's what you're looking for if you're it. running dice it. games on the Vegas Strip. You need yeah. some pigeons in yeah. there to be able to give you oh, some A card money. game. Yeah, look at a three card. Okay, so pigeon. And I was just thinking like something that's similar. Mark. You would just call it a mark. Yeah. Uh, weak sister. Do you think of another one? I feel um, like that's I feel like that's it. Weak link. Weak link, yeah, but that's Broken like. Broken link in the chain. There's always mm. that one. Because, you know, every coach. We're only, oh, a, the other we're one. only as strong as the links of our chain. Yeah, no, and I would say like a dead fish. Find the, find the fish. No, I don't know about dead fish. That that has a what? little different implication. No, 